Here's an apparent secret that maybe everybody's forgotten. But our founding fathers were Bible thumpers. Did you know that? They come from all sorts of groups. There were Congregationalists, Episcopalians, German Reform. There were Lutherans, and there were Presbyterians. I couldn't find any listings for Cowboy Church, but just about everybody else was there. And they came here with one thing in mind, and that was freedom to worship the way they wanted to. They didn't have to listen to the government saying you have to do it this way or that way. They came here for religious freedom. I mentioned earlier, it was the pulpits that got the attention. That's where it all came from. I believe it was John Adams said that the pulpits thundered. It's kind of like you went to church and you found out what was going on. Because those old early pastors they get the Bible, and there's something in that Bible to cover everything that happens. And they knew where it was, and they preached on it. The Declaration of Independence. How many have read the Declaration of Independence? I'm sure you read it in school. You've looked at it. You know what that, all those rights in that on that Declaration of Independence. If you narrow it right down, it's a list of sermon topics. That's what those old preachers preached on. They carried the Bible right out on the battlefield. The, the Bible was right on the front lines, right in the thick of the whole fight. The country was founded. It's hard to believe this, but it's founded in God we trust. The whole nation, this country, no matter what the religion was, and we had a mixture that came in. There was one thing in mind: in God we trust. I mean, can you imagine the battles that was fought and these guys was going out there fighting some preacher fired them up? Things we think about now when so many preachers firing them up is somebody getting fired up because they did something wrong. I mean, we've got churches now that's out there firing more people up that are fighting for the devil than they are fighting for God. And they get more attention. There's a church in Kansas. I'm not sure whose side they're on. But they're firing people up. They're getting attention. A whole lot more attention than the churches that are fighting for God. The ones that are preaching out of the Bible. Because some of these guys that are preaching this stuff that's getting attention, they're preaching on what they believe. There's preachers standing in the pulpits today they're not sure what they're standing on. They're not sure what they're preaching from. And the big thing they're going to make sure of is they're certainly not going to step on anybody's toes. Now let's look at another country that was founded on their belief in God. Let's back time up. Let's go back to Judah. Where the tribe of uh, Judah had settled. They were God-fearing. They were God-blessed people. And the town or city of Jerusalem was the center of their culture, was the center of their government. Now these people, they're not like the people are today. Their attention, their focus had turned away from God. 
totally turned away from God. Actually, God said, look, we want you to lay your fields aside every seventh year. Give the land a rest. And they didn't. They didn't listen to God in that. They didn't listen to God in a lot of things he told them. And he said, okay. So he allowed Nebuchadnezzar and his armies to come over and they defeated Jerusalem. They just whooped them. Didn't have a hard time doing it either. And anybody that was fit to, to, uh, to carry back, anybody strong enough to become a slave, they carried them back to Babylon to become a slave. God let them stay there 70 years, one year for each of the years that they were supposed to, or that 490 years that they were supposed to let their land rest for each of those years. They were in captivity. Now the time had kind of backed off on all this, and the people were starting to realize that God really was who he claimed to be. Some of they should be listening to. And then the exiles had been returning back to Jerusalem. They were all easing back. Actually, the first thing they started working on was the temple. Think of the prettiest town that you've ever been in. And then think of the most magnificent building that you saw in that town. And then think about it destroyed in shambles. And that's what these people were coming back to Jerusalem seeing a town that had been deserted, nearly deserted, for 70 years. Because the ones that were left behind were the ones that were too weak to work, or they'd have been slaves. So if they was too weak to be a slave, they was too weak to do anything at home. So the town maintenance had been terrible. They got the, the temple built. Then there was this fella, and Nehemiah. And you know how sometimes you just happen to hear something? He found out that they were returning back to Jerusalem and the walls hadn't been fixed. There were still piles of rubble. Let's look at Nehemiah. Nehemiah is right over here toward the back of the end of our just ahead of Psalms a little ways. It's actually it's the last of the history books. Nehemiah had a prayer. And I'm going to drop down here to his prayer starting in verse 5. It says, O oh Lord, God of heaven, the great and awesome God who keeps his covenant of love, with those who love him and obey his commandments, his commands. Let your ear be attentive and your eyes open to hear the prayer. Your servant is praying before you day and night for your servants, the people of Israel. I confess the sins we Israelites, including myself. Did you notice that part? We get out here and do this number, right? He looked and all three is pointing back at him. He said, and myself. That we've committed against you. We have acted very wickedly toward you. We have not obeyed your commands, decrees, and the laws that your servant Moses. Remember the instructions that you gave your servant Moses saying, if you're unfaithful, I will scatter you among the nations. But if you return to me and obey my commands, then even if your exiled people are the furthest horizon, I'll gather them from, from there and bring them to the place that I've chosen as a dwelling for my name. They're your servants, your people, whom you redeem by your great strength and by your mighty hand. O oh Lord, let your ear be attentive to the prayer, this your servant, and to the prayer of your servants who delight and re reverend your name. Give your servant success today by granting him favor in the presence of this man. I was cupbearer to the king. 
he's praying he's going to go to the king and ask for some help. How many has been to city council or to the mayor and said, hey, this is what we need to do here in town. I need this to happen. We really need this. And we try to build up nerve to go. And here's Nehemiah going to the king who has them there as slaves. And he's saying, I want to go home. I want to go back to Jerusalem. Two thirds of the captive Israelites, the children of Judah, had already returned. And he's going up and saying, I want the rest of my brothers. I want your blessings to go back and rebuild the town. That's what he was praying. And the king says, okay. God did that. Now, Nehemiah's got this plan. He's going to organize the people and he's going to get them to work together and he's going to rebuild the wall of Jerusalem. Now Jerusalem's a big town. Just imagine this little town of Glasgow and we're going to build a wall all the way around Glasgow high enough that the enemies can't jump over and come in. And he said, we're going to get this wall built in 52 days. Can you imagine how many people must have laughed at him? But he was persistent and he put God on his side. Part of the people worked while part of the people slept. And they worked 24 hours a day. And in 52 days, the beautiful wall of Jerusalem was rebuilt. Because God said that he would bring them back together if they followed him. It was an impossible task. But God helped them to do it. You know, I believe an American can do the same thing. Because I believe that America has done just like the children of Judah that turned away from God. They're getting out you trying to do things on their own. Every excuse imaginable for not being in church. Every excuse imaginable why God can't get this done or can't do that. And I believe that the walls of our secure nation are crumbling just like the walls crumbled in Jerusalem. We haven't been carried off to Babylon like they were. But I believe that we've fallen into a much more complex slavery than the children of Judah fell into. We've fallen into slavery to so much. We're slave to taxes. We're slave to high gas prices. We're slave to hectic schedules. Just about anything that you can think of, we've become slave to. Because the country's turned away from God. I mentioned earlier about the Black Road Regiment and what they did and how this country was founded on Christian principles. But we've strayed away from those Christian principles and our walls crumbling around us. Our wall of protection that God has built is falling apart. Do you think a wall of security could be rebuilt? I do. But I don't think we can do it without God's help. I think this country could be what it used to be with God's help. 
God told King Solomon in 2 Chronicles 7.14, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I'll hear from heaven and forgive them their sin and I will heal their land. God said that. And I believe he means it. And I believe that he'll do it for this country. I don't believe we're what we used to be. I don't believe that we're the great nation that we used to be. But I believe that if we do something, you see that? We can't sit and point fingers because there's three coming right back here. We sit around and say, well, I'll let somebody else do it. I'll let somebody else look after it. That just don't work. Now we talked about that best kept secret. I read a report this week. It was called, Does the Bible Really Matter in 2011? Are you ready for this? It's from Fox News. Here's the part I'd like to share. The Bible is the secret of America's freedom. Forget the Bible and America will go the way of the first Protestant nation, Nazi Germany. That was from Fox News. And that's where we're headed. Nehemiah turned to God. He didn't get out there and say, forgive me or forgive us and forgive me. <coughs> he didn't point fingers. He got in and did something. And we've got to do something. We've got to share best kept secret in America. Because I believe that America can rebuild a wall. And I believe that this country can again say, in God we trust and mean it. Thank you.